Come on, clap your hands to the Lord, everyone. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. And we're here to celebrate. Amen. We're here to celebrate. Hallelujah. For the one who has left to gone home to be with the Lord in glory. Hallelujah. It is a privilege. For the Bible says that whether in life or death, hallelujah, we are in Christ. Amen. Whether in life or death, we are in Christ. For in him we live and move and have our being. Amen. God is awesome. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Welcome you all to the tabernacle today. To give thanks for the life of our dear sister. Sister Joan Nelly Alexander. Otherwise called Sister Nelly. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. And as we're about to enter into our program, the first hymn is Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance. And as our choir group will lead off in our hymn. God bless you. May you all stand. And Huh? All right. Let's start again. May we all stand. Praise the name of the Lord. When he's like, like a river. At end my way, when stars the sea, billows roll. Oh 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. For uh, there is a hope, a hope that maketh us not ashamed. Hallelujah. The blessed hope. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Blessed hope. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this day. The day that thou was made. A day in which we live and move and have our being. A day in which we are complete in you. The author, the finisher of our faith. It is you who write the book, Lord. You know our uprising. You know our downsetting. You know our victories and you know our losses. But one assurance we have. That it is well with our soul as we trust in you, as we look to you. Father, as we give thanks for the life of Sister Nelly, we bless your name. We praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up, Lord, in song and in praise, and in exaltation. For thou alone art God Almighty. It is you who attended to our soul. 
in our struggles and in our triumph, you're God. You're God alone. You sit on the throne. Hallelujah. And it brings joy to you when one of your children go to sleep to rest from their labors. For they will awake in the joy of thy wonderful kingdom. You have already paid the price. A price we could not pay. In your great, wonderful heaven. And so, as we look to you today, as you blow your winds of blessings, Seep through this tabernacle. Beckon, call, touch. Invite. Hallelujah. Stir our hearts once more. Mighty God. And pull us closer to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. And amen. I welcome you all to this Thanksgiving service. I encourage you to participate, to sing, to clap, to shout. And even in this solemn moment, to enjoy yourself in Christ. Because the angels of God, their arms are open in celebration in welcome to those who would enter in. So welcome again. At this time, we'll be having the reading of the first lesson. It's taken from Psalm 23, and it will be read, read by Kashina Mullins and Dickel Anderson, grandchildren of Sister Nelly. Osha. The Lord is my the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want He maketh me to lie down in green pastures He leadeth me beside the still waters He restoreth my soul He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake Yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil thou art with Thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of thy enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord in for forever. This will be followed by a 
Special selection, Janik Alexander Swaby, daughter. Good afternoon, everyone. This is a poem written by me, and it's titled by mom. The words from my lips, when you leave me at the creech, by mom. When I'm at home and you leave me for the market, by mom. By mom, the words from my lips when you leave me at the creech. By mom, when I'm at home and you leave me for the market. By mom, for every time we say goodbye, it's a possibility that we will, it will be the last time. When you take me to school and leave me in teacher's care. By mom, when you comb my hair and send me on. By mom. When I'm old enough to ready myself, I turn to you only to say, bye mom. When I'm leaving home to be on my own, the words became harder to say, knowing I'm no longer in your care, but still need to say, bye mom. As time passes by, I grew stronger while you grew older. That's when the tables turn. Now I am to care and share the pain you bear. For every time I leave, I now turn to say bye mom. Never knowing the day that I really need to say bye would have been so near and truly is one of my greatest fear. And so there comes the day that I had to say goodbye mom. Bye, mom. Finality of goodbye. At this time, we'll be inviting Damian Alexander to do a tribute. He will be followed by Sister Simpson, then Sister Ains, another church sister. God bless. Go ahead, Dina. Blessed morning to each and every one. Blessed morning to each and every one. I think the only silent person who should be here is the dead. Because you wake up this morning and God give you a privilege to be here. So I think you should be grateful this morning. You know, um, my mom, I was like a tail bearer to my mom. I tell you, I tell my friends every day, I have a vicious heart, cruel heart. You can't read me, you can't detect me. But my mother was the one that brought me. To the sense of the mind where I am. You know. When I tempted to do things. I can remember my man. I remember one time that we go places. 
that should not supposed to be there. And when police make off for me, I should be in church that day. And I said, no, I can't die. I tell my mama a lie. I'm going to Skyline, but I know where I was going and what I was up to. And I make a thing in me that day that certain place I will never go back because of her. My mom, anywhere you go, you will see us together. Rather on trips, anywhere. Even to when I develop a medical issue. My mom will dear at the hospital with me, even when I hide her until I don't come. She have to investigate when is clinic day. And I stay close to her. That my father felt away. That there are some secrets. I kept in for her. Why is it? We are so close. But 2021. Is when is the farthest I go from her. When I was incarcerated for two months and a couple of days, couldn't get to see her, but I would try and make it in, uh, make a possibility to for her to see me. After coming out, I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't go at the home for two long years. I have to stay away. If she didn't feel good and comfortable about it. And I will talk to her and I tell her, look, I will be okay. But I, I will come and look for you. So if the law catch me in Papin, you him have to go lock me up, but I have to see you. And I will come when I can get the ch when I get the chance to. But sometimes it may look away because I'm not there every day. Sometimes when I look and I see a one will have all sort of thing to say. I can tell you God time and you can't beat it. Because God knows what everything what was going to happen. It was noted. And I'm, I'm telling you, my mom set an example for her children that if one of us die and go to hell, it's been nobody's fault. It is nobody's fault. And if I can't thank her for nothing else, is to know that she teach us the way. Get up a man in times we have to pray. A problem we can't stay in the bed. We have to pray. My mom teach us that and build that in me. Some depart after going through life, getting bigger and getting older. But no matter what obstacle come my way, I never depart. At a pointed moment, I said, Lord, you going to have to kill me right at the altar because I'm not moving. I will steer right with my fault and everything in me because I don't see anything out there for me to go to and live far. And no matter what fault in me, no matter what ways in me, this is where she show me. And this is a place that I will remain until when the change comes. Because sometimes in life that we seek so make the change in ourselves, but that's a lie. We cannot make change. We must have the mind and the ability to change. And that's where God work in you. And my ability is to change, is to make myself a better person each day. So that my man can feel comfortable even though she dies. I can tell you, I carry her name all over before she died. I said to my friend one time, in the in last year, they were going to a party and they said something to me. I said, look here. Me never go on party yet. Me so 45. And if me never go on party yet, what do you mean, say? Me not go, no, no. Me we keep the party. 
When we have a female in my bedroom, I said you must tell him. Because anything we're out there, as long as we have a female, we can live the same life. We build the life inside the home. And if our club, the club can go in at the home. If our dance, the dance can go in at the home. Because I'm not at the part and go nowhere else. Because my mom showed me. When, we, when my mom took me to this place, it was what? Bored. And what it is, concrete. She grew all of us here. We are legend here. Nobody can put you out here. Here is my home, no care where we go. Here is my home, because here is where my mother grew me. So today, I want to say to you, where are the mothers? Is to enlighten your children to the right path. So that when as they grow old, that they will never depart. Let if they depart, depart of their own mind. But you teach them the way. So that they can be able to be a better person. And I am happy today. Of who I am. And today. For all mothers. Teach your children the way. Nowadays they have mother. Nowadays them get up and eat food. But them don't. I don't know one thing they remember is get up and eat food. But them don't remember for prayer. They don't remember for call them children for prayer. They remember say so the child thief out of the house and gone. And when they come they give them a big stone and they beat them badly. But they will never call that child, hug that child and pray and show that child little love. So therefore the child becomes so vile because you grow that child in violence. Don't take no violence to no children that you had. Take the word of God to them. And impart the word of God into them life. That the word of God may grow like seed in their heart. God bless you today. And I give thanks for all of you that keep us in your prayer. It's not hard. You may not see me say they shedding tears, but I can't tell you. I am bleeding. You don't see it. But I'm bleeding. God bless you. All right. Praise the Lord, everyone. Can we praise the Lord again? Today, we are having a Thanksgiving service, are we? And I am personally so very thankful to have met Sister Joan Alexander. I've known her for an extremely long time over 35 years and I'm just gonna share with you a list of my thoughts so today we are feeling a real sense of loss and sadness I'm sure you agree with that that our dear sister Alexander has passed aren't we however I don't know about you but there is a great sense of joy in my heart knowing the type of life that Sister Alexander lived. So I can say that there is joy that she has finished her race. She has really run a marathon of a race. And now she's in the presence of the Lord whom she served faithfully for, I'm sure, at least 35 years. It has been a long time, and not just in years, but in quality years. She just never gave up. So, Sister Alexander is remembered as being a loving, 
gentle person, someone of a quiet spirit. I'm sure you are identifying with me, very peaceful and a pleasant person. There was never a time in the many years I knew her that I can recall her being involved in any argument or controversy. She's never a busybody, busybody in other people's affairs. A true representative of a godly woman. And I hear Damien speak. And even though her children, they might have walked away, but I know that instilled in them is that deep love for God that she had taught them that will never leave them and it will ultimately put them in good stead. In her humble way, Sister Alexander quietly gave of herself and of the little that she had. She might not have had a lot, but she gave to others. She gave of herself. She gave to her children. She gave to her grandchildren. She shared. She was a faithful supporter of the Women's Fellowship Group and the many street meetings that were held. She was there in the surrounding areas in Augustown. She was faithful to the house of God as long as she physically could. I can recall when she could barely walk. You see her with her stick. And when some of us young people shy away and not come in, Sister Alexander was there. At times, when I went to look for her and saw where she had to come from to reach in the house of the God, you know for sure that this person was a faithful strut. As a true soldier of the cross, Sister Alexander maneuvered many obstacles and challenges in her adult life. I know that you're here and you're intimate and you know them. Her husband's sickness, incidents with her son, even a son that died. And she herself had a prolonged sickness, yes? which eventually saw her being incapacitated. But she remained faithful during all this time. She continued to view her God as being faithful, wise. Yes, sometimes, you know, we would wonder, you know, is what about my God and good? She old, she held to those beliefs that he was a faithful God, he was wise, he knew what he was doing, and he was good. She steadfastly trusted in him, even though she might not have fully understood his plan. Through her adversities, she learned to depend so much more on the Lord. On occasions that we visited her, she was always in good spirits despite her situation, never complaining. She had the most radiant smile, ever praising God in song and making melody in her heart to the Lord, a true servant. Her life stands out as a beacon of light and has left an indelible mark on those she came in contact with. Like Paul, I can hear her say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. We need to rejoice this morning. Indeed, she has fought a good fight. May her spirit today continue to inspire us 
and may her memory be a blessing to us all. God bless you. Sister Eins. Bless the Lord, everyone. You could forgive me because I did not know I was on the program. Anyway, um, from my accept Christ as my personal Savior, um, third, um, 11, 12 years ago, I have met Sister Alexander. There is Nothing that anyone don't say she's not. She's very humble. When church, <laughs> okay, yeah, I have known Sister Alexander twelve years now, and the person that I know, she's really a humble person, and every time when church over, we always talk, me say, Sister Heinz, me say, the devil want to try, do this and try, do that. Me say, you know, saying, can't win. No further worry, you say, because you're all praying. And me say, me know that man, me know that man. So, um, when I'm not seeing her come, all the time I wanted to go up there, but the work was a little hectic. Till one day, I have to obey the spirit and come there and um, didn't know this what was happening until I come oh my God. but to God be the glory great things he have done she have gone and to run a race that is really well run and I really going to miss her because many times at church we laugh we talk and when she going to do any um, anything at the hospital or doctor, so she will come to me. Uh, sometimes we have a little prayer or something. And uh, till we start to follow up at the hospital with her. But family, just embrace yourself and take a book, a page out of her book. Because the race that she ran, it wasn't easy, but she did run it. I should run it with dignity and nothing behind it. Praise the Lord, everyone. Can we all stand to our feet and just lift our hands in the presence of the Lord? Amen. God is a good God. Even if you are not yet committed your life to him, just by the lifting of your hands, a signal to him saying, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for the mornings, for the sun and the moon and the stars. Thank you for the breath that I breathe. Thank you for the rivers and the trees. Hallelujah. Thank him. Just thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you think of his goodness, thank him. Thank him. Amen. You are alive. You are standing here because of his grace. And there's more for you to do with your life, your race that you run. Though Sister Nelly has run her race. Praise the name of Jesus. We're going to sing this chorus as we worship the Lord. Amen. Together. Heaven is better than this. Oh, what joy, what bliss. 
On that streets of shiny gold, in that land where we never go old, heaven is better than this. Oh, what joy, what bliss. I love the preaching and the testimony too, but heaven is better than His name, bless his name. He is good. And the heaven is better than this. Heaven is better than this. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, in the land we will never grow old. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, blessed be the name of our Lord. We'll have a second lesson, and that will be taken from Ecclesiastics. It will be read by Abina Alexander. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. Streets of shining gold. Good afternoon, everyone. Today's lesson will be taken from Ecclesiastes 3, reading from verse 1 to 4. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up which was planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise him, praise him. And now we'll be having some tributes. First one will be by Kerry and Hall. And then after that, we'll have the open tributes. And that will be followed by a presentation done by the ushering group. Afternoon, everyone. Ooh, clear. Okay, so whole fashion rated. I don't have a track, but I like doing my songs a cappella. So this is a special song for my auntie today. So it's by Whitney Houston. His "I Look to You." As I lay me down, if I hear me now, I'm lost without a cause. After giving him my all, winter storm have come and darken my sun. After all that I've been through, who on earth can I turn to? I look to you, I look to you. After all my strength is gone, in you I can be strong, I look to you. And when my melodies are gone And you I hear a song I look to you Try to lose my breath There's no more fighting left Sinking to rise no more Searching for that open door. But every road that I've taken led to my regrets. And I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Nothing to do but lift my hands. I look to you. I look to you. And when all my strength is gone, in you I can be strong. I look to you. I look to you, yeah. And when my male all these are gone, in you I hear a song. I look to you. And as we extend the open tribute We will invite two or three persons to Come and make a tribute if you are so inclined. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. 
praise God. We're not here to mourn, but we are here to rejoice. Why are we rejoicing? We're rejoicing because we know that our sister has found rest. Is there anybody here have doubt whether or not she find rest? Praise God. You heard. She was saved. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so we come to celebrate our life. Praise God. I am one of the sisters. Many sisters. Praise God. And I heard the sister, she was um, referring to her as being quiet. She was. She was a very quiet person, seldom speak at times. Um, I remember that she always had a smile on her face. She said very little, but there's always a smile. Praise the Lord. And so we just thank God that she found rest. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Today I just want to remind you that after death, there is life. And nobody know, I'm not here to preach a sermon, but I'm just encouraging you. Nobody know who will be next. And we're all here. And we're Thinking about tomorrow, making plans for tomorrow. But in your plans that you're making, where are you with Jesus? Are you making plans to meet him? We thank God this afternoon that there is hope. Jesus, he made a way for us. So I just want to say before I sing this song that if you are here and you have not given your life to the Lord, it is not too late. This is the perfect time. The sky shall unfold preparing the stars will applaud him with thunder of praise the sweet light in his eyes
I will be uh, singing. The news came to Jesus. Please come fast. Lazarus is sick, and without your help, he would not laugh. Mary and Martha. Watch their brother die. They waited for Jesus. He did not come. And they wonder why. The death watch was over. on his Oh my. 
show me the grace. But she said, Lord, you don't understand. It's been there for days. The gravestone was rolled back. Then Jesus cried. Lazarus come forth, then somebody. Praise God. Praise God. Um, we're not happy to be here. Praise God. Praise God. This is my last tribute to Joan Alexander. Yes, I am here. Anyway, reading from Ecclesiastic 12. Remember now the Creator in the days of your youth. In the days of your youth, while the evil days come not, nor the ear draw night, when you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. Full stop. Remember the Creator now, when you are alive, because you have no pleasure in the dead. The dead cannot praise God, nor those who go down in silence. Let God be glorified. Praise God. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Let us worship the Lord. Come on. Let us worship the Lord. Mighty God, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be lifted up, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Worship with us while we minister in this song. 
If I could count the tears that are falling, it would seem like an ocean to me. And if my heart was a window you could look through, oh, the pain and scars you would see. I know that tears will never stain the streets of that city. Glories are dead. All my mansions too. Teardrops are welcome beyond the gates of glory.
John said, I saw a new heaven. on the sickness, you look on the pain, you look on the sorrow, you look on the troubles that you're going through. Hey, uh, you look at the battles won and the battles lost. But you know one day <laughs> it's soon be over. It's going to be better on the other side. Soon be done. All the troubles and the trials. When I get old, when I get home on the other side. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Jennifer Millwood, please come. Hallelujah. 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 And after that, I'm going to ask Brother Kenwood Brown. You say something? He was there. He was there. We were there. Hallelujah. We were there that night when that head water burst. Hallelujah. And that baby came forth. Hallelujah. When Joan Alexander got the Holy Ghost. Jesus came down into her heart, into her life, and made her a new person. Hallelujah. And there no sickness rock her body, but she shall see God. The worms destroy this flesh, but I shall see him and not another. She's going to see him because she died with a hope, trusting in him. Hallelujah. I remember those days, Brother Brown. Bold church? Ah. Hey, those who miss the bold church days, you miss church. You come when church over. Hallelujah. You miss church. You come when church over. The only good thing though is that the Holy Ghost is still the same. Hallelujah. And you don't have to leave here like you came. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Sister Melod. Bless the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Praise Bless God. the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Remembrance of Joan, Alexander, Nelly, Sister Alex, as she's affectionately, we affectionately called her. Joan, Alexander, and I have been friends for over 50 years, which blossomed into a beautiful friendship. Oh, it blossomed, it all started, we became associated with each other when we were in our, in our 20s, early 20s, but because of her late husband, as he knew me before her. Anyway, we became closer as we started to attend this church. She got married before me, which of which I attended her wedding, and likewise, she attended mine also. One thing for sure, that she loved her God. I can rem remember she had stopped attending church for a while, only to be visited by Pastor Pedro Henry, with whom I had to journey to her home to find her on a Monday night to find out why she wasn't coming to church. Anyway, our friendship 
grew from strength to strength that persons thought we were blood sisters along with her other siblings. She was a force to be reckoned with, especially with, her, with God. Her family, she was, she was a wonderful wife, a good mom, who took care of her children, and a kind-hearted person. In standing here with no strength of my own, but the Lord has given me it to help me, I miss my friend so much. But the Lord has helped me with my, the Lord has, I, excuse me just a minute. I wasn't able to see her in the last of her sickness. January was the last time we spoke and we encouraged each other in the Lord. God knows everything best and he, he does it in his, in his time. Sleep on my sister, may your soul rest in peace. I'm going to be singing a song. There's a land beyond the river that we call the street forever. And we only reach the shore by faith decree. One by one we'll gain the portals There to dwell with the immortals When they ring those gods and bells For you and me Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. It's just really good to be here. It's good to be here, but although it's a sad occasion, but um, I really wanted to be here this evening. I just want to greet our pastor and our chairperson and everyone here, and especially Sister Alexander's family, her children. I just want to hear, I'm just here to say that I go way back with Sister Zander. I really met her here in church, and that's all the memory I have of her. But as um, our leader, Deacon Simpson, asked me to say a word, you know, in a family, not all the members are vocal. You have some members in the family that are very quiet. And as I recall, and as I reflect, 
I can see that, remember that Sister Sander, as we normally call her, is that silent member of the family. As you look out here today and see this beautiful arrangement, when you see this arrangement, it reflects Sister Zander. Yes, why say that? She's always smiling. You never see Sister Zander and she's not smiling. And I'm just saying that, you know, when God touched someone, it's not just another touch, but it's an extraordinary touch. And I'm saying to the members of her family and the saints of God today, all of her friends and relatives, when you mourn, don't mourn as if you don't, she didn't have a hope, but she has a hope and a hope that makes her not ashamed. And that is why when I heard of her passing, I said, I definitely have to be here. You know, living abroad sometimes, Virgin, I'm not here to tell you that I'm living abroad, but I'm just sharing with you. When you're living in abroad for some times, and you hear of your loved one's past, your friend's past, I heard of Sister Dean, I heard of many others. And you know, it's not like taking a bus, coming to a funeral from New York. You have to put yourself together at the cost. Sometimes you really want to be here and you just can't make it, financially speaking. But I'm saying today, I'm so glad that I'm in the island at this particular time when I can be here in attendance to give my last respect to Sister Zander. And I really pray that your, you as her children and her family members keep the faith, keep the courage, because Sister Zander is resting in the arms of her sweet Savior. God bless you. Now we'll be having ushers. Please be prepared as we ask our choir to lead us in the singing of the offertory hymn. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but oh, only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the soul.
our eyes be laid before you, Jesus. We bless those hands that have stretched forth to give to the cause. Father, we pray, Lord, that that which has been sown will begin to grow. Lord, they will move from financial difficulties to financial elevation. Father God, that they will have their needs and it will be met because it is you who multiplies that which was sown. Bless your name today. Let it grow in your holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. On Christ, the solid rock. Eulogy will be read by Janiel Alexander, daughter of Sister Alexander. Hallelujah. Jamie, welcome. Um, good afternoon, everyone. All right. Um, I'm going to start by reading a scripture it was one of mommy's favorites like it's just the first verse psalms 51 verses 1 have mercy on me O lord according to thy loving kindness a scripture that meant everything to mommy Joan Elizabeth Lambert, Nia Alexander, otherwise called Nelly by family and friends, but I and my siblings call her mom. Joan was born at home in August Hill, St. Andrew, on July the 26th, 1959, by Selvin Lambert and Mandarin Chambers. She's the third female, but the fourth sibling of first the six children, but was then relocated to, uh, she grew up in um, August Hill with her parent, but then was relocated to Red Light to live with her, then partially, I should say partially adopted family, which are the Schroters, while there, she attended the Craigton All Age, but was pulled from school at an early age due to circumstances. And after a few years, she then went back home to her mother and additional six, sibling, six siblings, which in total makes 12, but that was then with her stepfather, Sigismund Minot. Being there for a while later in life, she had her first child at the age of 18 and Soon after that time period, she met her husband, her father, while selling in the market with her mother. And the man that she met was Cephas John Alexander, who she always described was very persistent in pursuing her hand, but eventually won her affection. And their union brought forth her second child, Damian Alexander, and then, within a short space of time and a few years later, her other children, Adisa Alexander, Alicia Alexander, Janique Alexander, and myself, Janiel Alexander, of which is the last of six in total. 
one of mother's favorite statements was, each one help one which defined her personality so much because she always loved helping others. There have never been an instance when there was someone that is in need that needed the help and mommy will turn her back. Even if it meant giving away her last or she would take her things and she would say that God will provide for we. And I remember it used to think that I didn't like it, but coming forward, I understood what it meant. She was a mother to a million, and I have to say that because she was mother to her friends. Every friend that each of my siblings came home, they, they loved mommy because she played a crucial role in, her, in their lives as well. She was also a mother to her nieces and her nephews and her 13 grandchildren and one great grand, which meant everything to her. My mother was never the one to show a public display of affection, but one thing for sure was her love for us all was, it was evident, it was real, even though it wasn't shown publicly at times. She grew us rough. As persons know her as soft and humble, but she is rough. Like, if you slip, you slide. And my sister used to say, playing with mom was dangerous, but always an experience for a lifetime. One that helped build the foundation memories of our childhood and ones that we all hold dear to our heart. Just to share, just to share a, a little bit or a little example, there was once a time we we all decided that we were going to play a game. We were going to play a truth or dare. And in our eyes, we were given, my sister and I were both given the most dangerous dare of all, which was kissing Miss Nelly in public. And I had to think not twice, not three times, I had to sit and contemplate if I was going to survive it. <laughs> and the experience was tragic because mommy threw me down like a wrestler and she sat on me and then we all laughed because it was just fun because that is how she played because she was rough. And we sat and we talked about it, saying that she nearly killed us over one kiss. But sharing this to say, despite all our ups and downs, we wouldn't trade her for the world. For me, she was my rock. And for everybody else, she was their tower. She never talked much, but she always knew when we needed her. There were times she would just randomly call and said. Janiela, I know you're not okay, but God is able. And that is part of what I will miss the most. I don't want her to be remembered being sick or in her final moments. I want her to be remembered as the vibrant, God-fearing woman that she was. Even though um, it started for everybody, she lived there, as everybody has say, basically everybody came up here, as you can all see that church, it was foundation, it was everything. Not one Sunday. Can't miss. And I want her to just to be remembered as that person. I know she wouldn't want us to worry or cry like I'm doing now because she's used to cussing and say my tears are too near and I must save them when I needed them the most. And she used to always say, why worry when you can pray or God is able? And she would want us all to be strong and remember her and her smile 
that lit up her beautiful face in her best years. My final take is that we all know that she is no longer in pain, and that is what we're most grateful for. But she's in a better place. As she would say, or she was always jealous, especially the fact that some of us are no longer in church. She would say, me, I got ever go drink milk, milk and honey, me no know about you. And she, when she said this, she said it with confidence because her faith never wavered. Not once, even when ours broke, hers never wavered. She will be greatly missed, but fondly remembered by each and every one of us here today. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. I sat and I was just thinking to myself, I mean, this is a very vibrant church, but Sister Nelly was one of those persons just never liked too much excitement, except when the anointing is over her. But, you know, I felt like the mood of the service was just one that she'd appreciate. So to God be all the glory. We're going to sing in as we... Worship, as we sing and worship the Lord, you can worship with us. Praise God. The Lord has brought me through all my trials. When I failed him, he didn't cast me away. He stood right by me through all my troubles. When I was lost, He didn't let me go astray.
of the Lord Jesus Christ, the God who give us life, who God who have allowed us to be able to exist. What asks us just to lift our hands to him in worship and in praise. Jesus, thank you for life. Thank you, Lord, for life. Lord, thank you for life. Thank you for being here today. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. 
Praise the Lord, everyone. I too want to express condolences to the weeping family. There are some things that we will never be able to repay. And I know that sometimes as human beings, we don't have that love and care for each other that we should. I'm aware. I'm aware. But I pray to God that he will help us to have a heart like him. It is that heart that will go the extra mile for anybody. And so to the bereaving family, I prayers are with you. I know it's hard to go through moments of grief, pain when a loved one is lost. Amen. So we pray for you today. God will give you the strength to endure. I will not be long today, I promise you. I just want to share with you from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm just going to read a few verses. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 6, and I'm going to skip down to verse 50 to verse 58. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory that which I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. O that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen above, about about 500 virgins, sorry, at the once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are falling asleep. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. Sorry, and the dead shall rise incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. For when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and movable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to read Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, virgin, by the mercy of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen.
I just want to speak to our hearts, to our hearts today using the first verse of Romans chapter 12 on the word sacrifice. Is it really worth the sacrifice? Is it really worth it? Father, help us today. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You may be seated. The most I can remember of my childhood is when I was about three years old. And I, I remember that my parents were getting married. I recall the wedding. But the fondest memory that I have of that occasion, uh, part of it was fun, part of it was not, that I sat down on the bench on the, out, on the outside. The bench didn't have a back. It was just a bench without a, a back. And I sat beside this little beautiful girl. And at three years old, I, I felt something on the inside for her. But unfortunately, I fell asleep. Somebody came and took me and carried me inside. And the memory that I have the next morning was when I got up, I saw empty bottles. I saw cake, parcels, empty parcels and cake and just about everything. And I saw empty plates. And I cried. Because they ate off all the food and didn't leave me any. They drank all the drinks and I got none. I can't remember much more. But now I am 58 going to 59. September will be 59. I realize that there is a transition. There is life that progresses. And instead of getting younger, I'm getting older. And I know at a certain time, I will not be anymore in this life. All of us here today are recipients of life. Whoever this being is, whoever this creator is, he has given us life. We did not choose to be here. And if some of us could re rewrite time, we would find a way not to exist in the current experiences that we have. But we are here. And there are some of us here who, there are some of us here who have experienced this creator. Sorry about that. And there's some of us here who have experienced this creator in some form or another, whether by prayer or by a testimony you prayed and he answered your prayer, by sickness and healed you, or he did something in your life. 
But I believe that for most part, all of us here have a belief that there is a God. There's something in us that tells us that there is a, there's a creator. But unfortunately, it is not in all of us that inclination, that passion, that desire to really serve him. And there are times when we desire to serve him. Praise the Lord. We desire to serve him. But unfortunately, we don't have the power to serve him. But he has given all of us life. He has given all of us an opportunity to exist. He has given us all of us a chance to go through a period of time in life. And this is our time. This is our time period. Many have gone before us and many will be in the future. But we are here for a time. I, I, I couldn't really imagine that I would be 59, going to 59, because I wanted to die early, because of the pain and the stress that I endured as a child. But I remember that at the age of 19, I came in contact with this being. I came in contact with this creator. And I responded to him. Now, at that time, at 19, no young man really wants Jesus. You want to enjoy life. You want to live it up. The girls were the, the thing that was on my mind. The parties, because I went to parties. Yes, I, I wanted to enjoy life because I was sheltered growing up as a young man. But when Jesus came and knocked at my door, I responded. I opened my door and he came in. Now, my experience is not different from yours. Because all of us here go through different experiences in life. We go through different changes. We go through different conditions. We go through ups and downs. We go through struggles and joys and peace. But in some of us, we don't understand that there is more to life than what we physically experience. We, we don't understand that there is more to life than the things around us. Because in truth, there is a, there is a, a being. There is a, a being that gave us this life. And this being decided to sacrifice his life that we may have life. Because the Bible says, in Adam all died, but in Christ shall all be made alive. Now, for most part, all of us here, we are afraid of one thing, one major thing in life. And that major thing is death. Yes. Because when we are sick, we ask a prayer. When things are going down, we crave for life. We don't want to die yet because sometimes there are some things that have not, we have not yet accomplished in life. But this being died that we may have life and that we may have life more abundantly.
abundantly. He sacrificed himself that we may have life and have it more abundantly. There were some that were saying that there is no resurrection. And when Paul had to defend the fact that what Jesus did was enough to bring us life and to bring us life more abundantly. And he came to defend that reality. He came to defend that in Adam all died, but in Christ shall all be made alive. And so they were saying that there were no resurrection. It's, uh, it, it is not worth it then. It doesn't make any sense because what is the, what is the use sacrificing yourself towards this God? At the end of the road, there is nothing. There is no reward to get. Because all of us, we, we live and we do things to gain a reward. The reason why we work is because we desire a reward. If your job is not paying you, you are going to leave that job. If that job is not paying you enough, and you get a better opportunity, you're going to leave that job and find one that is paying better. I wonder why is it that there are some people who will decide to serve God and there are others who will not decide to serve God. Yet everybody go through the same experience in life. In some things, there are some persons who attain the heights of riches. Yes, and, and, and we sometimes desire to have more out of life than what we can achieve. We want to gain more. But there's a story in the Bible that Jesus used as a reference. The story with the rich young ruler. He came to Jesus and asked him, Good master, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Keep the commandments. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not be a false witness. He said, All those things I have done for my youth, what is there left for me to do? Jesus said to him, Go and sell all that you have and give to the poor and come and follow me and the bible said that young man walked away sorrowfully in other words he was not ready to give up riches for jesus his disciples turned to him and said if that is the case then who can be saved jesus said with man it is impossible but with God, all things are possible. It is easier for a camel to go to the eye of an eagle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And then Peter with his big mouth. Peter now said, Master, we have left all to follow you. What is the reward to get? Jesus said, no man has left father and mother and wife and house and children will not receive an hundredfold in this life and in the life to come eternal life in other words if you make the sacrifice there is something you are going to benefit with if you decide to give up the things that you think is so important to you for the things that you think has no value. He said there is a reward to get. And here is the difference. Here is the final conclusion. Because Solomon said, he said this. There's a time to be born. And there's a time to die. 
There's a time to mourn. And there's a time to laugh. There's a time to cast away stones. There's a time to get our stones together. Then he said, what is it under the heaven? What is, what is so important unto the, uh, under the heaven? Because Solomon had things that you and I desire to have. But Solomon said, everything under the sun amounts to zero. And this is the reason why. This is one reason why. All the possession that we have in this life, that we say, we say is ours. All that you say is yours, that closet with shoes, clothes, car, house, money in the bank, all that you say is yours. That man is mine, and my man that. You can't touch him. I'm my woman this. This is she's mine. She belongs to me. And we and we have this belief that we're gonna live forever in this life. So we gather a lot, we gain a lot, and we and and we hear God speaking to us. But we say, God, I am not ready as yet. Give me some more time to enjoy life. Solomon said, everything that is under the sun amounts to zero. Because naked we came into this world and naked we're going to leave. I've been to many funerals and I've seen they throw money in the casket. I, have, I went to one and they put a lot of ganja in the casket and told the person you can smoke on. I see them put beer in the casket. Yes, and they put dragon in the casket. And, and I see them even drop jewelry in the casket. And I guarantee you if those jewelry add value, when you're gone, they're going to dig it up and take it out. Because in their mind, there is something else after this life. But in truth, there is something else after this life. Because the Bible said, after death comes the judgment. But there is the life after death. Because this is not the end. I don't know what got into Sister Alexander, what foolish idea she had to decide to follow Jesus. I don't know what crazy thought went through her mind when she decided to start going to church. And even when she was going through her bad times and, and her hard times, she still held on to this God that she has never seen. But something in her said, if I can just stick with him, I can just hold on to him. There is something more to get. And that's why Paul said in conclusion, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We are Constitution Hill. You can't hold this body down. Hallelujah. Maypin, Dovecott, Medaris. When the trumpet sound and God say it is time for my people to arise, mighty God, hallelujah. When that trumpet is sound and you hear, there is going to be a shaking. There is going to be a shaking. Every bone shall reconnect itself and the flesh shall come back to the body because God died to give us life and when Jesus paid the price for me I am guaranteed life to come
I may not be rich. I may have a big house on the hill. But it's one thing I know I have. I have treasures in heaven. Where moth and road cannot corrupt. And where thieves cannot steal. Lazarus. Why did you as a poor man decide to surrender yourself to God? The beggar died, the rich man died. But the Bible says in hell, the rich man looked and saw Lazarus. Who had nothing. But he had something that was more valuable than anything in this life. In closing today, God cannot and will not force anybody to serve him. It's a choice. He can only knock or he can call. If he force you to serve him, it's, it's stop being love because God is love. But all of us here today have a choice to make. She made her choice. Even if she didn't have riches, she didn't talk a lot, but she made her choice. All of us here today will have to make a choice. Because at the end of this journey, at the end of this journey, this life, all of us will stand before our creator and we have to give an account to him how we lived our life. For those who backslide, I can only say to you, you have made a wrong choice. For those who have who have not yet made this choice, I can only say to you, you have made a wrong choice. Because what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Jesus asked the question, and what shall a man give in exchange for his soul. What? What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Is it worth it? Is it really worth the sacrifice? I have seen many times persons who, who live their lives. Just a few weeks ago, I was at home and I heard a barrage of gunshots. And from my recollection, going through gunshot, going through shootings for years, I said to my family, those shots are connecting. I didn't hear an echo. And we sat in the house. Then about five minutes after, we heard a commotion. When I went outside and looked, I saw a man lying down beside his truck. They came and they killed him. I cried. First in my life, I've ever cried for somebody. He, he was not saved, but he was, to my heart, a good man. I really cried. He called me father, father. I felt it in my heart. I really felt it. I helped to lift him up and put him in the car. I really felt. I really felt it. You see, all of us have a time 
And we don't really know when our time is going to come. But I pray today that we make the right choices. Because wrong decisions can cost us. Bad choices can cost us. And sometimes some of us, we wish we could go back in time and change some things in the past. But we can't do it. But we can surely change. Make decisions that will benefit us in the future. God bless you. Let's all stand. Thank Pastor Emily. Pastor Ricketts. For that word. And as we meditate on it, we will do likewise. We have come to the end of the service here in the tabernacle. And for those of us who are going to the burial site, I guess we will just let you know that the, before the, everybody starts to go outside, remember it's the party that will leave first behind the ministers and then the family members and then the well-wishers. Okay? Yeah, man. And now we're going to ask the family members to just to approach the altar and let us offer prayer for you. Hallelujah. That is our tradition here. We always offer prayer for the family before they leave. It's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Can you come forward, please? Come, Brother Nalis, come offer prayer for the family. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you just bow your heads and close your eyes? Most righteous, eternal God. We give you thanks, Lord, for everything. Lord Jesus, as we come to this crucial moment of this Thanksgiving service, Lord, we present Sister Alexander family before you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we ask that you wrap your loving arms around them. We pray, mighty God, that you'll build that fence, Lord Jesus. Restore the wall of love and unity in the family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, the work is not yet done. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, hallelujah. That you'll continue to work on the hearts of our children, of our entire family, mighty God. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, for those, mighty God, who have taste of your goodness, mighty God. And because of any circumstances, Lord, they're not where they're supposed to be. We pray, God, that you'll move upon their hearts. That they will take their place in the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus, we know the war is on. 
But we pray, mighty God, that you'll give them the strength that they need to go on living day by day. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for spiritual strength. We pray for emotional strength, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for physical strength in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, mighty God, we pray that when they leave this assembly today, that there's a seed planted in their heart, mighty God, that there will be a craving in their heart. Oh God, hallelujah for you. Lord Jesus, Sister Alexander has a run, a race that is well run. Now it's up to those who are alive and well, mighty God, to pick up the baton and to continue, Lord Jesus Christ, to run the race. Lord, I pray for your will to be done in their lives. We pray for your guidance. We pray for your protection. We pray, God Almighty, hallelujah, that you'll tear down, mighty God, every giant in their life. We pray, Lord Jesus Christ, every altar, mighty God, that is not of God will be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain, mighty God. Oh, hallelujah, we pray that doors that should be open will be open in their lives. We pray, mighty God, that door that need to be closed will be closed in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Overshadow them with your presence, Lord. Take control of their lives and let your will be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Morris. Brother Paul Bearers, please come forward. 